Hello everyone, my name is Kinetic and welcome back to Kingdom Under Fire 2. In today's video, I'm going to be talking on a pretty touchy and controversial subject about free-to-play games and pay-to-win. There's a bit there is a difference despite what a lot of people will say. Like a lot of people will uh, immediately assume that if a game is free to play, then it's pay to win. And that is often the question that comes up when they hear, even for people that are a little bit more open-minded, if it's free to play, the first thing they ask is, oh, well, is it pay to win? And I totally understand that because I've been around the MMO block. I've played so many different MMORPGs, be it subscription, uh, buy to play, free to play, and I've definitely seen uh, pay to win type of games. I've also seen games that aren't necessarily pay to win but they block you off like every corner that you turn by some kind of paywall or something like that you guys may have experienced this yourself or maybe you've just heard about it from other free to play games well i want to use this video and be as honest as i possibly can and i'm, I'm also going to leave it up to you i mean at, at the end of the day you guys are going to make up your own mind what is pay to win because you know that's just how people are you could tell you know you could have a uh, a definite definition of what pay to win is but still people will will you know not look at it that way and say well, well this is pay to win or whatever well, i guess let's start with what my definition of pay to win is and this probably lines up with what a lot of you guys think is pay to win pay to win is going to a cash shop like there is here in kingdom under fire 2 and uh, and finding like really powerful items that have ridiculous stats that you can't get anywhere else uh, that's pay to win to me. What else is pay to win? Uh, the game may re restrict you in uh, a type of resource or something like that. Uh, and in order to get that resource, you either have to grind your ass off to the point that you, your fingers bleed and your eyes fall out of your sockets, uh, or you just go to the, the cash shop and you buy it. So it's more than just convenience but it's like a severe shortcut uh, to getting to what are powerful items or convenient items and not having those items available to you uh, readily in the game uh, through some other type of means from using a, let's say, a, a reasonable amount of time and effort, right? So am I clear on this? Pay to win, in my definition, is you go to a cash shop and the, the best stuff and the most convenient way to play the game is through the cash shop instead of just playing the game naturally and organically. Well, I can tell you from my perspective, before we even look at any of these menus and stuff like that, that I don't think that's the way that Kingdom Under Fire 2 is. Let's go ahead and we'll look at uh, the cash shop menu here. I'm on the, if you're wondering what server I'm on, I just started a new character on a different server, the Philippines server, so things are a bit different from the Singapore version. I'll, I may touch on those differences later. But down here is the cash shop, right? So you click on this and it brings up a menu. And here they, they show off some of the, uh, the, the prepaid cards that you can buy in different shops or whatever, I guess, from these locations or something like that. And what do we see here? We see recharge, daily charge, exchange, gift code, uh, refresh wallet, and stuff like that. So basically you can have a balance here where you uh, you either use one of these cards that you can find maybe from convenience stores or something like that in the Philippines, uh, or you can probably just use some kind of online uh, currency like PayPal or something like that to add cash to your, uh, to your balance here. And what do we have here? Well, we have cubics. Cubics are a, a type of coin that are used to unlock inventory slots, bank slots. You can also use them to get uh, tickets for getting troops. So the cubics are just used for that. Let's actually look at the inventory space. You can see this is how much inventory space you have by default. This is my new character. This is what she looks like uh, at level 10. And you can click here and then it says, do you want to expand the inventory? You click yes and it costs 90 cubic. Uh, also the same thing would be for your bank as well. You have like about half as much, I think, space or something like that. And then you can unlock the rest using cubic and stuff like that. Now the cool thing about the cubic system is that you don't, I repeat, you do not have to buy cubic with real money. You can actually buy cubic 
from the auction house in the game. Uh, I made a tweet about this on uh, my Twitter account like a couple of weeks ago or something like that because I was so excited and thrilled that that was an option instead of being forced to uh, to buy the cubics in order to expand your inventory, you can actually just use your gold that you make in the game from uh, doing missions and uh, you know all sorts of different activities in the game, and then you can go to the auction house and just buy it with gold, which is absolutely brilliant. So there's a means of getting cubic. That's fantastic. You also have. Let's go actually back to that cash shop. And we can take a look at these appearance items. So we've got top, bottom, shoulders, gloves, and booth? <laughs> I think this is supposed to be boots. There's a bit of a typo. This is beta. Uh, lots of things are, are being uh, polished people. So yeah. Uh, anyway, so we've got um, what first you, what you want to pay attention to here. And this is actually different from the Singapore server that I'm also playing on. We have three day, seven day, and 30 day Basically, these are rentals, right? This is not buy to own. This is uh, pay to rent. Essentially, these uh, these uh, cosmetic items. These are not actually pieces of armor, but actually skins that will go over your armor. Now, take a real close look at this because it it does actually have a stat on it: hero movement speed plus twenty. Right? Let's go to the bottom piece: hero magic defense plus 10 shoulders hero physical defense plus 50 I think you guys get the point here these skins do have stat buffs on them and you can pay real money to rent these items and this isn't cubic either this is a different type of uh, currency this is a type of cash or whatever that I was talking about before that you can uh, get those prepaid cards right let's go back to the cash shop this is not cubic. This is actually a different, uh, another type of currency, uh, cash, I guess, is, uh, as generic as that is. It's being called, and that is what you will use in order to pay for these cosmetic items that have these stat buffs. However, <laughs> you do not, I repeat, you do not have to pay real money in order to get these, uh, these cosmetic appearance items. Let's actually take a look at them because this is cool. We've got a try on function here. There you go. We see it. it's the sexiness of these tops here. You do not have to pay this cash in order to get these items. You can actually get cosmetic items just like cubics. You can get them from the auction house. So once again, the option is there. You can, you can get cubics, you can get these cosmetic items and stuff like that. You can get, uh, you know, these pants and, and shoulders and blah, 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 uh, from the cash shop. That's a quick way, a shortcut to, to getting it. However, you can get it from the auction house. And the way people are putting it on the auction house is I guess they are, some people are, are, are being quite, uh, how can I say? They're, they're wanting to be the, the, the entrepreneur in trading or whatever, I guess, uh, in Kingdom Under Fire 2. I've seen this on Singapore server, seen it here on the Philippines. Some people are really into paying cash for cash shop items or whatever, like cubic and uh, for these cosmetic pieces and stuff like that. And then they go ahead, they turn around, they go right to the auction house, and then they try to sell it to you for gold. So they're, in, I guess in a way, they're sort of... They're providing a service to give us a means of, without having to pay cash, which is brilliant, uh, for these uh, these cash shop items. And so we pay gold, they get the gold, and everybody's happy, right? <laughs> we don't have to pay uh, a, a single penny for any of these items. We just have to get gold in-game, which is really, really cool. So, for example, um, I remember seeing, uh, what was it? I, like a hundred cubic or something like that and remember the the inventory slot right was uh was 90 cubic i remember seeing for a hundred cubic on the auction house on the singapore server it was like twenty five thousand gold or something like that take a look here at my gold i'm only level 10 like so basically i just finished the tutorial i've already got sixteen thousand. like in in a few more missions i'm definitely going to have like 20 to 30,000 gold, which will give me uh, a slot there. So you guys see what I'm saying here. I don't think that this is paid to win. 
there's definitely a cash shop. And in all honesty, from my perspective, of course there, there should be some means of the developer getting money for making a game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's free to play, that doesn't mean like they shouldn't get any money. You know what I'm saying? These, these developers have bills to pay, mouths to feed. You know what I'm saying? They're people just like you and me. They need to eat, they need to, to go places, they need to wear clothes and stuff like that. Um, they're not just robots that work for free. These people need money. So, if you're, if you're the type of person that can afford it, you know, and you really are enjoying the game, like me, then you should feel, not obligated, but you should, I, I, would, I would think that in, in your heart, you know, that you would want to support the developer, you know, for making a, if, if you're enjoying the game, you should want to, I think, want to, uh, to support these people and, and help fund them so that way they can continue to make awesome content. And I've seen their updates recently for Kingdom Under Fire 2, and I'm really, really excited with what they're doing. Uh, you may have noticed that, uh, down on the bottom here, they just added, uh, the PvP to the beta very very recently and I'm going to be doing uh, some testing with this and I'm going to give you guys my reactions later in another video but here they are adding more features and, and things like that to the game in beta and so far everything that I've experienced is really really fantastic I'm having a great time with Kingdom Under Fire 2 and so when it comes to launch I'm definitely going to be giving them my money uh, so that way I can, you know, just show my appreciation and like I said, help fund them so that way they can continue to do their awesome work. If you're the type of player and, you know, nobody should hold this against you that can't afford to uh, to buy these cash shop items, then, then fret not because you can just play the game, get your gold, and you can buy these items uh, from the auction house more than likely. Uh, what's another way that you can get uh, appearance items, those cosmetic items? You can also perform missions. Uh, later on, you will automatically, uh, through the missions, you will get cosmetic pieces. You will also get a, another type of currency for doing certain missions or whatever. Uh, and those will also allow you to buy armor boxes. And then inside of that armor box will be a... Um, inside of that armor box will be a one of the cosmetic pieces and stuff like that so there's different avenues that you can go down certainly to get the cosmetic items and things like that um and yeah as soon as i saw that there was cubic on the auction house immediately i just like spent a bunch of my gold i bought the cubic from the guy at the auction house and then i unlocked um a lot of slots i can't remember i don't think i unlocked all of them but i unlocked two of these expansion slots or whatever for, um, for my inventory and the same for my my banks so the way I had a nice sizable uh, amount of space I, I don't I didn't feel like I was having an inventory uh, space issue so much uh, most of the game but I'm the type of person that likes to hoard things <laughs> I'm a pack rat of sorts and so that's that was my fault really like if I wasn't such a pack rat then I wouldn't e even need to expand my uh, my inventory slots later this is the gotcha, right? Okay, this is pretty expensive for one. Basically, what you would do is you will pay a certain amount of cubic, and then like this, this almost kind of like um, like what do you call that? Um, a slot machine type of like spinning wheel will, will happen, and um, and then you have a chance at unlocking a uh, a troop, uh, a type of troop, like maybe it's uh, gunners or infantrymen or mortars or something like that. And again, this is just something that. It's a chance at getting something early, uh, but nothing that you can't get uh, just by normally playing the game. We have some consumables here. These are kind of interesting. Lucky box, you gain one item among accessory, cubic, badge, and other consumable items uh, randomly. So all that stuff you can get in game. This is something I don't know if you can get in game or not. This may be the only item that I've seen that uh, is not available in the game but is here on the cash shop. This requires just a little bit of explanation. You may or may not be aware that there is a leadership point system. If you've, uh, if you've been playing or, or keeping up with games like Arcage, that also has a, a similar, I, I can't, I think it's labor points or something like that. They have a labor point system that basically is, it's like a pool of um, like energy that you can use up and at 
and once you run out of it, then you can no longer, and for example, in Arcade, you can no longer uh, like craft or something like that. Leadership points in Kingdom Under Fire 2 uh, are what you need in order to gain rewards from, from performing missions. You can, so leadership allows you to, to go out there on missions, bring your troops and stuff like that, and when you complete a mission, you'll get rewards, right? Once you run out of leadership points, then you can still com do missions if you want. But you're not actually going to get um, so much so much of the rewards, I don't think. Uh, you won't get uh, drop boxes uh, like treasure chests or whatever to, uh, to open up and get things like crafting materials inside. Or maybe a chance at a piece of armor or something like that once you run out of leadership points. However, unlike uh, Arcage and maybe some of those other games, um, it's very hard to run out of leadership points. I mean... I've run out of leadership points uh, at some of the earlier levels or whatever, but that was just because I was failing missions like an idiot, um, trying to learn how, how to do certain things or whatever, and that's how I ran out of leadership points. They do recharge over time though, of course, right? At, at a certain time or whatever, at whatever, you know, the server time is for the game, those leadership points are going to refresh and you will get your leadership points back. All of this is, is basically a cash shop item, as you can probably have figured out by now, that allows you to refill your labor point, um, your leadership points. And it says here, recover leadership points uh, 500. And you can see I've got a pool of 1600. This actually grows also, by the way. This, actually, this gets better uh, and bigger as you level up. And so honestly, from my experience, and I've played the crap out of this game, like for some days, I find it very difficult to run out of leadership points uh, now. Really, I do. So I don't think that this is necessary. If you are the type of person maybe that is playing all freaking day <laughs> and all you're doing is grinding, 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 grinding and grinding uh, maybe missions or something like that, trying to uh, trying to get a, a special drop or whatever, maybe a sword or whatever from a certain mission or dungeon or whatever, then yeah, you're probably going to eventually run out of leadership points. And then um, then yeah, then maybe you may want to, to buy this from the cash shop. But for, for I think for the average player, this is probably really not necessary. I said the, the, the that taboo word, I said grinding, and maybe I'll add this to the video as well. Is Kingdom Under Fire 2 a very grindy game? No. Now, this is, of course, another one of those, well, you know, people have different definitions, but my definition of what grindy is, is you can't uh, do any quests, you can't do any missions or, or whatever. The only thing you have left to, to get experience, right, to level up, is to go out there and kill monsters. That's grinding to me, right? And that's me coming from my first MMO, which was Final Fantasy XI, where you had virtually no quests, you did have some missions, but your experience gain was from killing monsters and killing monsters hours and hours on end. That's grinding. You do not have to do that in Kingdom Under Fire 2. All the experience that I've gained um, that allowed me to easily level up, like with plenty of experience, was from doing the story missions and from doing the, 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 uh, the region quests and stuff like that. So it's been a very smooth experience, absolutely no grindy feeling whatsoever to me. Now, talking about dungeons and stuff like that, grinding missions or whatever, okay, that is sort of a form of grinding, right? Repeating something um, in order to, to get something. But isn't that normal of, uh, of online RPGs nowadays? World of Warcraft, uh, Star Wars, The Old Republic, um, all these different MMOs, pretty much. You're going to go out there, you're going to go into dungeons, and you're going to keep doing dungeons, a variety of them, you know, or missions or whatever, in order to get what? You're probably trying to get gold, you're probably trying to get armor pieces or something like that that's just you know that's just normal and that is available here in kingdom under fire too so going back to that example here in this game what people are probably doing in order to run out of their leadership points yeah is they're going out there and they're just repeating dungeons like a ton of dungeons or mission runs or whatever you know trying to get uh some kind of drop or whatever or running out of leadership points so if you're really desperate like then you can buy this from the cash shop Honestly, again, I don't think that is necessary. So my overall verdict, for me, from me personally, from my point of view, is that Kingdom Under Fire 2 definitely is not a, a pay-to-win 
game. There are no major paywalls or anything like that. Everything that you you could want, probably for the most part, except for those leadership potions, is available through some other normal uh, organic means of playing the game. The, the cubic is available on the auction house, the cosmetic items and things like that you get from missions or you can also get them from the auction house as well, those rental pieces. Oh, by the way, the cosmetic items that you get from missions here uh, are, are ones that you keep. They're not, you don't get rental cosmetic items. I should have probably said that earlier. The, the cosmetic items that you actually get from performing missions and stuff like that, you keep those. The ones from the cash shop, uh, as you can see, are rental items. The same thing from the auction house, um, you, or the auctioneer, whatever, who controls the auction house. Those are rental items. And also, I would like to point out that probably, more than likely, guys, the system that you see here for the the Philippines and for the uh, the Singapore servers and stuff like that is probably more than likely, in my opinion, not going to be the same system that they use for the Western markets, for example, Europe and North America. They're probably still going to have a cash shop, um, but they may not have items as rental. They, they may be um, instead buy to purchase because I've seen the, that difference as well. Like from the Singapore to the Philippines server, there's up to only 30 days here on the Philippines server, but on the Singapore server, you can buy up to a year uh, worth of rental time. So they may have um, a different package deal altogether for when they do the, the European and North American launch, they may have uh, buy to, to purchase, not pay, pay to purchase, not uh, pay to rent, which I would really like to see because I, I mean, the rental system is is okay, I guess, um, but I like to own things. I don't like to rent things necessarily, but that's up to you as a buyer, how you want to go about using your money and, and what, uh, what you want to get. Maybe, you know, renting an item could be cool because then you, maybe you try it on for a while and you're like, eh, I don't think I like this anymore. And then you try on something different, um, you know, and you, you don't have to pay full price to actually own the item. You only pay like a very small fraction to rent it, to try it on and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. I again, I hope this video was informative and enlightening to you. Uh, I want to know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about Kingdom Under Fire 2's uh, monetization here, this free-to-play game. Do you think that it's pay-to-win? Do you like these cash shop items? Uh, do, you, do you dislike this kind of system? Let me know down in the comment section below. And I'd really appreciate if you click the like button to, uh, to help support these videos. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these from now up to the, the beta, up to the launch and beyond in Kingdom Under Fire 2. That's all for now. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.